The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve from Boatest.com, and today I'm on the Beneteau Swift 34. The team at Beneteau told me that they designed this as a performance-based cruising boat. I'm going to take it on a full test and see how they've done. For Boatest.com, I'm Captain Steve. Very uncomplicated layout at the helm. I hate to overuse that word, but it certainly is appropriate. There's a sunscreen over the analog gauges up above, a Raymarine C90 widescreen display. Just to the left, you have your autopilot. Below, your controls for the DTS, the digital throttle system. And just below that, your trim tabs. Lighted rocker switches and a remote control for the spotlight. Moving across, you've got bow and stern thrusters, and I love always to see a rudder indicator. The engine control is mounted on a roughly 30 degree angle and it's not so much of a problem. There's a nice uh, hand rest just to the right of the control so you can make incremental changes very easily. That's a comfortable feature. I noticed at low speed the Swift 34 tends to ride a little bit bow low so most of the weight is forward. But that's a good thing because once you get up to speed I'm at about 2500 right now and we're riding it roughly three degrees bow high so I've got excellent visibility all around while we're cruising from the lower station. Because we've got most of our weight forward, I find that when we're going at low speed, take a minimal amount of spray over the rails, but once you bring the speed up and get the bow up, you won't have that problem. Our Beneteau Swift 34 had a length overall of 36 feet 7 inches and a beam of 13 feet 1 inch. With an empty weight of 16,471 pounds, 3 quarters fuel and 4 people on board, we had a test weight of 18,121 pounds. The 425 horsepower Cummins QSB 5.9 HO brought us to a top speed of 20.7 knots at 3100 RPM. At that speed, we were burning a total of 18.9 gallons per hour and getting 1.1 nautical miles per gallon for a range of 208 nautical miles. Best cruise was shared between 2350 RPM and 2500, where we were running at 13.1 knots and 14.7 knots respectively. But you'll probably stay at the higher 14.7 knot speed as I did, where you'll be burning only 11.4 gallons per hour while getting 1.2 miles per gallon for a range of 245 nautical miles. We reached planing speed in 7.9 seconds and accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 11.4 seconds. Underwater we're turning a roughly 25 inch wheel which is adding an awful lot of torque and at speed I'm having to put in about one half the range of the starboard trim tab to offset that and level us out. The helm, five turns from lock to lock. That's kind of what you're looking for for a boat in this size and class. It'll keep your passengers comfortable no matter how aggressive you get on the steering. Beneteau is conveniently located, a side door. There's a double wide helm seat, so you've got another set of eyes looking forward. It slides fore and aft for comfort. Behind the helm, there's six feet, six inches of headroom, but Beneteau thoughtfully added a four and a half inch step, so the vertically challenged captains are able to have a little bit more visibility. If I had to come up with a downside for the helm layout, it would be that there's only one other person able to share the visibility that the captain has. Of course, up in the flybridge, you've got unlimited visibility, 360 degrees. Now, as unclouded as the lower helm was, it's got nothing on the neatness of the upper helm station. Gauges over to the left side, still carrying the pivotal rudder angle indicator, fuel, RPM, with a multifunction display inside, Raymarine C90 widescreen in the center, over to the right hand side, the DTS controls. Only three switches, one for the horn, your running lights, and your emergency engine stop. Down below you've got your Lemco trim tabs with indicators to either side still. Controls for your bow and stern thruster, a remote for your spotlight. Over to the left hand side of the panel, your autopilot. The engine controls are mounted just about on the horizontal, but I'd like to see them be a little bit higher. When you're driving from a standing position, my hand doesn't reach and I've got a stoop just to make minor speed corrections. Also a difference between the lower helm station where the destroyer wheel was mounted on the vertical, this one is mounted on a 45 degree angle. Now here's a surprising feature. I'm going 22 miles an hour into a 15 mile an hour headwind. And with this wind deflector just ahead of the helm, it's bringing the wind just up and over my head. So it's very comfortable. As for being able to handle this boat in tight spaces, not to worry. In fact, it handles so well, we decided to give the close quarters handling capabilities its own video. Be sure to watch it. That's our full test and performance review of the Beneteau Swift 34. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.